Jacqueline Fleisig is one of seven honorees who just won $25,000 to put towards their post-secondary education. She accepted her STEAM Horizon Award, that is Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts and Math, at a gala last night in Ottawa hosted by our own Heather Hiscox. Well, Jacqueline joins us now in Ottawa to tell us about her big night. So Jacqueline, good morning to you. Congratulations. How are you feeling today? Good. <laughs> a little bit nervous. Well, it's okay. It's, it's, it's a conversation between you and I. Everyone else is just listening in, so we're okay on this. So $25,000 you are awarded last night uh, for your scientific work. What does this award mean to you? Well, this award, it's a huge honor just to be receiving it in the first place. But it also means that because I have this money in first year, when I start university next year, I'll have the opportunity to do a lot of things that I wouldn't be able to otherwise because I'm supported by this award. And hopefully I'll be able to inspire more innovators by um, through this award. Well, you know, I have no doubt that you will because you have accomplished so much already. Uh, I want you to walk us through some of your inventions just so others can know uh, what you've already accomplished at such a young age. Okay, so um, one of the things I've done is basically I went to this program called SHAD, which is a um, an enrich summer enrichment program for young innovators, basically. And through that, we I did worked on a project for Shad Cup where we created a winter running mask called Breathable. And basically, what it did is it would warm up the air as it was coming in. So what it means is that when you're running in the winter, um, you actually it doesn't hurt your lungs as much. Um, and that was the, the idea to sort of get people outside and get people on the streets even in the winter when it's cold out. And you won a Microsoft award for that, right? Yes, we won the best website award at Shad Cup. And that's wonderful. And tell us about your other invention. So another thing I did is this summer I was able to work at a research lab and basically I did a project on what they were doing. So I got to like look at, they were working with uh, nanostructures and seeing how they affected cell growth. So for applications in biotechnology. Um, and I was able to create, a, there was a picture earlier of a 3D model of those nanostructures that I created, that I, a 3D model of the nanostructures. Um, and so I was able to see what kind of research was going on in that lab. Um, and where I could go after high school. Now, I have to say, you are inspiring just to hear that you've accomplished so much at such a young age. Uh, but I have to say, you know, we, we've heard how difficult science can be for young girls, that uh, perhaps there are things in science that discourage young girls from getting involved and getting interested. Tell us about your story. How did you uh, find your interest and then foster that interest? Well, I think for me, it was really about I had a lot of supportive people who have encouraged me over the years to get interested in science. Um, but I don't think everyone has that. So I have like I've had my friends, my family, basically I'll, I've had and, lo and teachers who have encouraged me to get interested in science. And then, of course, there'd be different events. So I went to um, a few conferences about girls in engineering and that kind of thing. And those have really inspired me because you get to learn about what you can do through engineering, what kind of an impact you can have. And I think that's a really huge thing that not a lot of girls get exposed to. So for those that are listening in, educators, policymakers, uh, from a young woman as yourself who's accomplished so much already, even before university, what would you say? How do we get more girls involved in the sciences and engineering and math? I think a huge part of that is giving them mentors and showing them that there are people out there who have done amazing things and they can follow in their footsteps. I think for that, for me, that was really inspiring. But then also it's showing them how much of an impact you can have when you're working in science and engineering because it, there really is so much you can do to make the world a better place. And there is a human side to it, not just a technological side, which is, I think, what you often see. So what's next for you? Well, next year I'll be studying engineering. Um, I haven't picked university yet, but I have two weeks left to decide. And um, hopefully after that, um, we'll see. I haven't, I'm hoping that I'll be able to do something great. Yeah, you, but I assume you've had some acceptances already? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Would you let us in on the decision? Yeah, um, well, I don't have a decision yet. Yeah. But the short list, <laughs> but, the short list right now. Um, I'm deciding between University of Toronto and McMaster University. Well, both great schools there, Jacqueline. Uh, and here's some happy news for you. We're done our interview. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't Thank so you. bad, was it? No. <laughs> Jacqueline Flies, congratulations and thanks again.